Marlene Oakes, known to her friends and family by her middle name, had been married to her husband, William Alexander Major, for nine years. He went by Bill. They lived in Verona, Kentucky and had two children together, Donald and Leilana. On the 11th of October 1980, Marlene and Bill had an argument. Bill would claim to police that Marlene had left in her vehicle and seemingly disappeared without a trace. Authorities searched the Major's property with no results. They believed it was plausible that she left due to an unsatisfactory marriage. It wasn't until a year after her disappearance, on the 29th of November 1981, that the partial remains of a human skull were found near the couple's home. Everybody and welcome to episode six of the Students' Verdict podcast. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode. For those of you who are new, my name is Emily and I'm your host. If you haven't already, please go and listen to our earlier episodes, which include cases such as the Monster of Worcester and the case of Ronald Sanford, a man who was sentenced to 170 years in prison for a double homicide he committed when he was just 13 years old. Also, please go and follow us on Instagram at the Student Verdict blog and on Twitter at Student Verdict. Resources used in this episode will always be linked in the show notes. If you enjoy the show, please rate and review. If you don't enjoy it, then keep it moving. With all that said, let's jump into today's episode. Helen Marlene Oakes, the daughter of Willie Craig Oakes, and Lorraine Mildred McQuarrie, was born in Lincoln County, Kentucky, on the 7th of December 1954. She married William Bill Major in 1971, and they had two children, a son Donald and a daughter Leilana. It was no secret that Marlene and Bill had a difficult relationship. Both of them had engaged in extramarital affairs. Rumours swirled that Marlene had begun a relationship with Glenn St. Hilaire, St. Hilaire had met the Majors after his truck broke down while he was travelling from Ohio to Texas. St. Hilaire would later move into a trailer parked on the Majors' land. He became good friends with the Majors and worked for Bill in his garage. It's alleged that Bill encouraged his wife's relationship with St. Hilaire, perhaps because it lessened his own guilt for having an affair with another woman. It will come as no surprise to you that by the autumn of 1980, Marlene and Bill's marriage was falling apart. On the 11th of October 1980, Marlene and Bill had an argument. St. Hilaire removed himself from the situation and went to cool off. But as it grew later and later, he became more concerned. When St. Hilaire returned to the Major's trailer at around 3am, the home was described as being in disarray. St. Hilaire asked Bill where Marlene and the children were. Bill said that his wife had left and taken Donald and Leilana with her. What was odd was that there was no evidence that Marlene had taken anything with her except for her vehicle. Her prescription allergy medication, driving license, social security card and jewellery were all left behind. Bill would later tell everyone that Marlene got in her car and simply drove away. He claimed to have driven around looking for her for most of the night. After Marlene's disappearance, some strange things started to happen. Firstly, it was discovered that Marlene had not abducted the children as Bill had claimed. He had in fact taken them to a neighbour's house around 11pm on the night that Marlene disappeared. Bill had told Donald and Leilana various stories to explain away their mother's disappearance. He told them that she had left her family for St Hilaire. He also told them that their mother was a drug addict, a prostitute, and that she didn't care about them and had just left. Over the next week or so following Marlene's disappearance, Bill resolved to make the 870-mile journey from Kentucky to start a new life in Rhode Island with Donald and Leilana. In readiness for the move, he began selling his belongings. These included a tractor and three guns, a 9mm pistol a shotgun and a 22 caliber rifle, which he sold to his neighbour, Trini Bryce. Marlene had seemingly disappeared off the face of the earth on a Saturday. 
Two days later, St. Hilaire notified the Boone County Sheriff's Office that Marlene was missing. He had grown increasingly concerned when he discovered that Bill had lied about the children having been abducted. He knew Marlene would not have abandoned her children under any circumstances. Authorities initially found Bill's claim that Marlene had left an awful marriage somewhat plausible. They nevertheless searched the property, but this turned up no results. Her dental records would be submitted to respective agencies whenever a woman's body was found that matched Marlene's description. On the 29th of November, 1981, a partial skull was discovered by a hunter in a rural tract of land a mile away from the Major's land. The skull had no teeth and no jaw, and the bone was badly degraded. Having analysed the skull and the bullet wound in the top of it, the medical examiner concluded that the bullet entered her face and exited through the top of the skull. Due to the lack of a brow ridge and other factors, anthropologists were able to confirm that the skull belonged to that of a Caucasian female, approximately 30 years old. Evidence suggested that attempts had been made by the killer to conceal their victim's identity. At the base of the skull, there were small cut marks on the bone, suggesting that the killer had intentionally tried to sever the ligaments which attached the jaw to the rest of the skull. In the 1980s, DNA fingerprinting was still being developed. Clearly, this would not help authorities when all they had was a partial skull fragment. Similarly, they could not rely on dental records without a corresponding set of teeth to compare it with. Therefore, the identity of the skull remained a mystery. Another big development in the case was the discovery of Marlene's diaries. In 1975, Bill Major had been convicted of molesting two boys, and around the time of her murder, Marlene had written in her diary that she had witnessed her own husband, Bill Major, sexually assaulting the couple's son, Donald. With this shocking discovery, Marlene made plans to leave with Donald and Leilana to get away from her husband. Marlene went on to explain in her diary that Bill had agreed to sign the divorce papers if she kept his abuse a secret, but that if he changed his mind, she would tell her mother-in-law what Bill had done. To protect herself, Marlene gave her diaries to St. Hilaire. On the day of her disappearance, Marlene had confided in her sister that she had proof against Bill, which was kept somewhere he could not find it, and that if anything happened to her, the information would get to the police. Marlene told her sister how desperately unhappy she was and how she was definitely going to divorce Bill. Once St. Hilaire went to the police, the authorities seized the diaries and the weapons which Bill Major had previously sold to his neighbour. Having read the diaries, authorities did acknowledge the details she listed in her diary to be a motive for her disappearance, but were struggling to build a case as there were no signs of foul play in the couple's trailer. It was determined that the diary itself was not considered strong enough evidence for a murder charge. Both Glenn St. Hilaire and Bill Major denied any involvement in Marlene's disappearance. Detectives asked Bill Major to come to the station for a polygraph test, but he refused and instead moved to Portucket, Rhode Island, where he was originally from. I'm sad to say, after the move to Rhode Island, the sexual abuse of Donald continued. It was said that this was when the abuse of Leilana began. Detectives travelled to Rhode Island to speak with Donald Oakes about the allegations of abuse. Unfortunately, detectives were unsuccessful in obtaining any useful information from their visit. Once they had left, Bill discovered the police had been sniffing around, and he beat his son, accusing him of giving the police information. Somehow, the charming Bill Major remarried in 1981. The children confided in their new stepmother, Pauline, who reported the sexual and physical abuse to police in 1984 after the children told her that their dad had previously threatened to kill the other sibling 
if either of them reported him to the police. When the abuse was eventually uncovered, Bill was arrested and convicted in 1985 for the sexual abuse of his children. He was incarcerated in Rhode Island and served approximately 10 years. Whilst Bill was incarcerated, Marlene's mother gained custody of her two grandchildren. As Leilana got older, she began to have more and more questions about her mother. One day, she finally asked her grandmother where her mother was, having been told by her father that her mother had abandoned her for a life of drugs, prostitution, and to be with her boyfriend. Her grandmother told her that she presumed her daughter Marlene had been dead since she disappeared. After Bill's release in 1996, he was due to face additional charges from authorities in Kentucky, so was transported back on a detainer, which had been issued against him for the prior sexual abuse of Donald when they lived in Kentucky. It should be noted that, due to the statute of limitations and, quote, insufficient evidence, further action was not possible in relation to these charges. However, it was during his incarceration in Kentucky that it was said Bill Major had a very interesting telephone call with his father, James Major. It was alleged by James that during this phone call, his son made a shocking confession that he had killed his wife, Marlene. In early 2001, detectives became aware of this telephone conversation, and in a bid to make a case against Bill Major, they travelled to Nova Scotia, where James Major lived. They asked James whether he would be willing to have another phone conversation with his son. They hoped that during the phone conversation, Bill would acknowledge the confession, as the prison did not record inmates' phone calls. James was willing to cooperate out of disgust for his son's behaviour, even going as far as to suggest a cover story that he only had a short time to live. In March 2000, James Major allowed police to tap his telephone as he had the call with his son, who by this time was no longer incarcerated. Unfortunately, during the call, Bill was evasive to say the least. It's likely because he suspected something was wrong. At one point during the conversation, he said, quote, Why do I get the feeling that somebody is trying to set me up? When James asked him to say what had happened, Bill said, quote, Even if I could, I probably wouldn't. In a desperate attempt, James told Bill that Leilana, Bill's daughter, wanted to know what had happened to her mother. Bill replied, quote, Ask Marlene's boyfriend in Indiana. I think if they had a talk with him, they might be surprised. Towards the end of the phone call, James reminded his son that he had confessed to killing his wife previously. To this, Bill replied, quote, At the time I was in jail, and I was pretty well upset. As Leilana began to put the pieces together, she eventually confronted her father, demanding he tell her where the rest of her mother's body was. She just wanted a proper burial. In a callous response, Leilana recalled how her father responded by saying, If you think I'm going to tell you where your mother is buried, you're crazy. When Leilana turned 20 years old, she decided to take matters into her own hands and requested her mother's file from Boone County Police. Armed with paperwork, she began interviewing various witnesses. By 2001, technology had advanced dramatically. It was during this time that Leilana learned of mitochondrial DNA testing. A mitochondrial DNA test traces a person's matrilineal ancestry using the DNA in his or her mitochondria. Mitochondrial DNA is passed down by a mother to her children, both male and female, so mitochondria extracted from the partial skull was compared to a sample of Leilana's mitochondria. The test concluded that Leilana was maternally related to the partial skull fragment 